Good morning, Jim Dykes for the VIN Advisor. VIN stands for Vehicle ID Number. So, a lot of similarities really with what you're doing with the homes. Uh, if you think about it, I don't think there's a worse purchase experience for any consumer than buying a car. It's pretty archaic considering all the other things we can do. Uh, there's an issue of you got a million dollar home, but you got a hundred thousand dollars in the garage and you don't do anything to manage, right? And so how do you get the most out of those assets and how do you, first and foremost, simplify the transaction? A lot of pain in this marketplace. Does anybody in here not expect to buy a car? It'd be a hassle? I mean, well, you I think of it? <laughs> okay, then you have the wrong presentation. And that's fine. You're going to spend three hours in the dealership. As much as the dealers would like to change, they're just living in the same basic sales process. I've been in the car business and around it all my life, as well as technology. I just answer one simple question Jim, why is it so hard to buy a car? It's because dealers price people, they don't price products. Right? Your product has a simple, clear price. Here's the freemium, here's 59 bucks. If you walk in and ask a dealer, hey, how much is that car? He goes, Tell me about yourself. <laughs> How many kids do you have? How much is the car? Right? So that's the kind of icky, sketchy piece. Plus, it takes three and a half hours to go through those questions. So I maximize my profit on the car, on the trade, on the financing, and on the aftermarket product. But guess what? It's no better for the salespeople. In 2015, of the 1.3 million salespeople who work in new car dealerships across the country, they had an 81% churn. I don't even know how that's sustainable. Right? So you got two hostages held at the table and the dealer saying, you're fine, everything's cool, right? We're doing just fine. So a marketing crisis, basically. VinAdvisor is a transactional platform that ultimately will allow a consumer to buy any vehicle, that's with a VIN, which means including cars, trucks, motorcycles, trailers, boats, similar number, right? So anywhere we have a database associated with that VIN number, from any seller on any device. Our first segment are new car dealers. If we fix that piece, then we can move on to the peer-to-peer -peer markets where you see competitors like BP and a few others. Optimize ownership. We'll manage all your recalls. Hey, you got a text alert. Green, there's a recall, but there's not even a park. Don't worry, yellow, go fix it. Red, don't drive the car, right? So instead of getting three different letters from three different manufacturers, you're able to better manage a car. And then a private marketplace for insurance, Financing, refinancing, which nobody's been able to figure out. And it's because you don't have an adequate description of the collateral. Real property is easy. I got a parcel map and square feet, right? I got a Toyota Camry. What does that mean? Well, if we have your vehicle in our system, get an accurate description of exactly what's on that car, all we need is mileage to be able to uh, create a collateral piece that somebody can refi from. Total addressable market. 53 million vehicle sales roughly a year, 17 million new, the rest of them used. New car dealers, used car dealers, that's CarMaxes, and then the smaller guys you see on Fulton Avenue. Peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, Craigslist, buying and selling from each other. A lot of new entrants into auto, this is a fragmented business. There are 8,500 dealership groups that own 17,000 dealers, roughly two per folk, right? Highly fragmented, that's why you haven't seen the change, that's why you can't buy a car online except in a very small instance. Warren Buffett bought the fifth largest dealer group in America um, 12, 14 months ago, something like that. Bill Gates is now the largest shareholder of AutoNation. Okay? But the top 100 dealer groups is not even 16% of the market. Incredibly fragmented. So the likelihood of anybody changing, you don't have a a Lowe's or a Home Depot in the in the product in that product category that can drive change. The challenge is, people would like to buy a car online. We buy everything else online, right? Makes it easier, easier to share information, more transparency, more clarity. So you have this this delta between the folks who would like to buy something online, half a million vehicles roughly. I'll show you the competitive landscape, but some of those are more just online lead gen. They are really sales. So if you say the horizontal axis, the old school, I got to sit in a dealership for three hours versus actually buy one online. I don't have any confidence, not because somebody's bad at the dealership, but I just don't have any way to know if I'm getting a good price or not. It's like buying stock without having the market data. It's like, Google's $900 today. Are you sure? That's what it is today. <laughs> Could I have a little transparency, right? How many people are selling? How many people are buying, right? Lead gen, industry spends $34 billion a year on lead gen. Nobody wants to be a lead. Anybody here want to be a lead? <laughs> I don't want to be a lead, right? It just means a phone call or an email that I wasn't looking for. 
true car is not, they charge the dealers 300 bucks, you think you're gonna get the best price, they're not true. Affinity programs, this is a great category for us. Costco members bought a half, almost a half million cars in 2015 through their auto program. But all it really gets you is a certificate which guarantees you a price, which is good, but it doesn't protect you on the trade or the financing or the aftermarket component. And for those who just say, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm not going to the dealership, they pay a broker 250 to some undisclosed amount for them to buy the car, have it sitting either in your driveway or we go buy a small retail shop somewhere that looks like a, a corner car max and we just get away from the payment way. So our positioning is we're a membership service similar to the paid uh, paid service John was talking about. <clears throat> 25 bucks for six months, it gives you plenty of time to buy a car, and then we move into the asset management piece, enroll all your cars, let us tell you about them, here's some offers, you're six months away from a lease coming to an end, here's a pull ahead offer from BMW like the one you're driving, there's a conquest offer from Mercedes, maybe you're interested in that car. So just giving you asset information, but the most important thing is, we look a little bit really like a, an escrow agent. We don't make a dollar more if you buy it or if you don't. Right? We just want to make sure you have a structured situation that allows you to, to make that decision comfortably, have all the information, so you can buy more easily. Oops, sorry. Uchi. Uchi. Car buying dramatically simplified. So complete transparency. You know, when you go to buy a car and you're sitting there and the guy writes and he grabs a piece of paper and he says, oh, you're at back and he heads over to the office, right? This thing, we have all the same information. So we're just going to put that in your hands. Get it? Hidden, from the hidden area it is, put it into your hands, let you look at it in a simplified manner so you can make the decision you need to make to buy a car. Main thing is you're going to be able to see the total price of any car, including every incentive, all the taxes. You know, I get the old, hey, you know, John will sell it to you for 28.2 plus taxes, title, and some other stuff. Well, that other stuff is expensive, right? So let's just make it straightforward. Five steps. Choose a car, new or used. Do you want to add your trade, yes or no? See every incentive available to that car, right? Choose the ones you're eligible for, detail, eligibility requirements. If, I'm, if it's a military offer, here's what I need. If I'm retired, I just need my discharge uh, notification. If I'm active, I need the equivalent of you know, an employment verification, right? Click on your, there's a portal that every, uh, anybody in the service can go do that easily. And the main thing is you can compare the actual total price of any three cars, two used and a new, one new, three, however you want. So you can, you can basically buy like you want to. Once you're ready, press the button, send an offer to a dealer. He negotiates online with you. Once we agree, you press the button again, all the data goes to him. What time can I pick it up? Everything's printed, everything's ready, the car's ready. It looks more like a closing on a house when you go to a title office or a escrow office. Everything's done, right? There's no great craziness about what's this going to look like and do you have the blue one? All done. It can be done, dealers just don't want to do it. Oops. So this is an example of what it looks like when you get your car and your trade-in incentives, college grad program, military, all the detail below that. Total price, here's the fair market value, we're giving you a fair market price, we'll tell you how we translate that and calculate that. You know, an algorithm based on supply plus average transaction prices. Same on your trade. Put your down payment in, see, them, you know, see your monthly payments, you'll know all those things before you ever get there. It also will help you structure a proper loan so you don't wind up with great credit and getting a bad rate just because the guy filled the credit app out in pencil. <laughs> you said, oh yeah, I forgot my alimony, you didn't include all the money, whatever it might be, right? So now you have everything you need in front of you. Compare side by side every aspect of the car. You can't do this anywhere. You can't do it in a dealership, right? We are just in an alpha launch, but I guarantee you there'll be a lot of guys working in dealerships who'll use this because if you say, if I'm selling a Toyota store and you say, I'm going by the Honda, go, wait, wait, wait. He's going to go over here and try to figure out, is that really an accurate price, right? We get that number. Once we're ready, you know, press, press submit the offer. Choose a local dealer. One tip, do not drive to go get a car. If you've been looking online for three weeks for a car and you find the one Toyota you want, Marin, do not go to Marin to get it. It's, de it's detrimental to you. It's detrimental to the dealer. It's detrimental to the industry. If you live in Roseville, and it's a Toyota, so they offer for that car, that VIN, to Roseville Toyota and say, please get this for me. They do it every day. It's an army of what I call the Great Panthers, right? Nice little retired couples drinking coffee, driving new cars with dealer plates on them. They drive them around, it looks like studs over baggage. Because if you don't, 
And you go to Marin, you never go back for service. You never have a relationship with the dealer, similar to the insurance agent, and you wind up being less loyal to the dealer, for sure, customer lifetime value of one day, and less loyal to the make, because you don't have a relationship, right? There's a lot of great reasons to buy cars locally. Taxes, right? <coughs> no bigger tax generator in any municipality than the Rosal Auto Mall. I don't even know who's second in that world, right? When you think of an average unit price of $30,000. This is the biggest part of the business from our perspective. Not charging the dealers a dollar, free. You call a dealer and say, I got a lead for you, and I need 100 bucks. They're buying from 30 different people already. You call a dealer and say, I've got my friend John, and these are his numbers. I kind of put them on on the car guy, put them on the numbers. He'd like to come buy this car for me, and they'll say, hey, thanks for thinking of us. Appreciate that. Because that's what they're trying to do. You're not in the, whip, in the middle of their car. You're not an intermediary like True Car who's got mountains of litigation against them because they're basically interceding illegally under franchise law, right? First time the dealer finds out about us, here's an offer to purchase. We look just like an affinity group like USA, Costco. Now all we ask, no fees, no training, no nothing. Just respond promptly and, uh, and negotiate online. They can do that. They just spend most of their time, 95% of the time, chasing leads that never respond to them. Powder offer, right, and the deal is done. Skip one? No. Data modernization, similar. <clears throat> so we'll have a dashboard. Here's the cars. You know, I own this one. I'm leasing this one. Here's all my usage, just so I can kind of track and compare. You know, <clears throat> if I'm living in the city, do I really not want to have a car at all? Case in point. My shill over there in the corner, sent to the presentation, right? Or do I want one car and, and then to use Uber on top of that? But just the, the ability to manage that. And then do I need insurance? Have, you know, have my rates change, service, roadside assistance. You can buy roadside assistance for any car, but people don't know that. It's hard to find. It's hard to vet the, the quality of the providers. And as I said, <clears throat> refinancing is a huge opportunity. All this data is of huge value. Maybe the biggest piece, real-time shopping data. So if I own a Cadillac and I'm looking at a Lexus and a BMW, and if I drop the Cadillac and I own one, now I'm looking at just the Lexus and the BMW, guess what Cadillac would love to send me? <laughs> A micro offer to say, hey Jim, here's an extra two months on the lease to stay in the car, right? The classic loyalty piece, but it's done in real time because you have access to the data. This could be a whole business in and of itself. The connected car, cars that have, you know, somewhere between seven and 12 processors, computers. Um, trust me, the dealers and NADA are already talking to Washington about who owns the data. So are the manufacturers, and nobody's representing the consumer, right? We don't get represented as consumers until the CFPB finally finds something so egregious <laughs> that they have to get involved. Go to market plan, millennials, women 35 to 55, affinity programs are our first three targets. Our launch offer, as I said, six months for 25 bucks. If you refer one person, you get the next six months free. So try to drive that piece. And then auto renewal quarterly, I call it the, uh, the Netflix pricing. It's too cheap to quit. Right? As long as we deliver some value to you after you put the cars in the system. You know, again, similar some ways to what John's done. Our biggest starting point here is content marketing. We're doing video blogs, auto bloggers, mommy bloggers, and we've got a new uh, deal. Anybody familiar with the company Nerd Wallet? You guys seen those commercials at all? Five and a half million uh, unique visitors a month. Starting credit cards, student refis, home loans, their newest category is auto. So we're kind of leading the charge with a couple of their content developers to do video panels and auto blogs to help them better understand the, the transaction process. I can tell you this, the hardest thing for people to understand is the underwriting and what it takes to get the proof for a home and a car are two different things. This is going to be worth the same more or less in a year. This is going to depreciate at 25%. Completely changes the risk profile of the lenders. So you can't compare the two. Social media, um, Facebook has a great product, it comes from Marl Polk. Facebook knows all their members, unless there's, they take every single privacy setting, they know what you drive. They know what you got in your garage. And when you start to shop, they know now that you're shopping, you own a Toyota, you're looking at a Honda. You own a Honda, you're looking at a Toyota, whatever it might be. So great targeting tools. And then I've got a win-back program we're launching with the dealers actually this week. <clears throat> For every 100 leads that a dealer gets, 60% never respond. They were just trying to get a bit of information, they were forced to give an email to get it, right? So we're gonna hand them a template, email template, SMS template, and say, 
just send a thank you note to everybody who sent you information and say thanks, hope you're driving a brand new car and enjoying it. If perchance you're not, and you'd hope to buy a car in an online manner, negotiate and buy online, check out VinAdvisor. If you send us an offer, we'll refund the first six months membership fee, right? Because there's a lot of people, I can tell you, a million people have asked me over the course of my career, hey, we're going to buy a car this weekend, tell me how to do it. I get them all coached up. I see them two weeks later, I go, how's the new car? It's like, oh, we just worn up for the fight, <laughs> right? I mean, th there's at least two months of business that's deferred because we just can't take the beating. I can't rope a dope this weekend, can I? Hillary tonight, right? I just, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm just not up for the fight. And then the affinity providers, so we've already reached out to USA and, uh, and Costco. Okay. The programs are of great value to them, but they're very expensive. It's basically just a call center with a lot of people trying to help you figure out, and again, we're taking care of one area, here's the price, you get a negotiated price, which is great, but no real protection around my trade value, my financing, what have you. So we could white label or co-brand here and take a lot of cost out of there and give their members a much better experience. You know, it's basically an, an anti-churn or even a recruitment tool for those, those affinity groups. So that's the story. Join the club. <laughs> yeah, seriously, um, vinadvisor.net, I would just love for you to go. You know, right now we are literally just alpha, um, and the difference between our alpha and beta is right now if you chose a car, you can buy a car right now online through us, but you'd have to send, we'd send you an email, you'd forward it to a local dealer. Within, you know, another two weeks you'll be able to just choose Roseville, Toyota, whatever it is, press send, it'll go completely through our system. Yeah, but mostly what I would love from everybody right now, we're raising our seed round, but we're reasonably funded, so I'd really just love whoever has a few minutes take a look at the site, check it out, send me some feedback, tell me what you like, tell me what's confusing. Uh, that's the biggest ask we have today. Awesome. And tell somebody else. And, <laughs> and feel free, it's not a covert opportunity or anything. Like All right, so oh, it's open for questions. Yes, sir. Is there going to be any way to figure out like what exactly the dealer markup is? Yeah, it's all, it, you'll see all of that. It's not so much the markup though, if you think about it, it's the market value. So let me give an example. The, the, the uh, demand for any car, particularly new cars, is based on day's supply. How many of these do I have and how quickly are they selling? You go to buy an Audi A5, dealer's got about 35 days supply, right? 15 of that's on a truck, which means you're gonna pay pretty close to retail. You go to buy a GMC product, maybe it's a 100 day supply. So you know, you're gonna pay a much lower price but really the margin on the car is not nearly what you think it is. The max is maybe 10 or 11% on a Mercedes or a BMW. Uh, and a car with an MSRP less than 25,000 has maybe something between 500 and 1,000 at the most dollars of profit. So the real question is what are the incentives? And are you getting the maximum value out of that? That's really where the, the deals are made is how much money do we add to the table to make it preferential to you? So you'll have that transparency, but it's not about margin. It's about accuracy and it's really about the value you trade if you're gonna trade the car as well. Yes, sir. So, great job, first and foremost. Um, one comment, one question. So, in your presentation, a lot of great stuff in there. The font size is super small in a lot of it, and it's hard to really grasp yeah, it right, from, yeah. from the distance. So, I would just go back, maybe cut some of the, the content out and focus on or the... Or a bigger screen, maybe? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a hand. I know, thank you. I but, um, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. It's just hard to see from a distance. Right. Um, and then I think the rub, to your point, I would love to buy cars online. I think the, the rub has been it's a tactile and performance type of product that you're buying. Like I, guitars, I love guitars. Me too. And so I have a hard time buying a guitar online because I want to play it first to make sure I like it. And I think cars is the same experience. So do you have a plan to walk somebody how to yeah. you know, take that first step and then come back to us? So one of the things I'd say, uh, even if you only spend two minutes on our site, the FAQs are from a car guy. So you'll get a, you'll get a clear, unbiased, succinct explanation of things that have always confused people about buying cars. Mm -hmm. So think of it in comparison to buying a house. You would never say, you'd say the same thing, it's a tactical thing. You'd never go to a house and say, this is it honey, we're writing an offer, and sit down at the kitchen table, write the offer and not leave until you did the paperwork, right? That doesn't make any sense. So if you want to, you know, first the first thing we tell people to do, you're going to trade the car in, stop by CarMax and get a backstop off. See what it's really worth. Compare it to ours, you'll know how to negotiate the price. If you want to drive a couple cars, figure out what you want to drive, just walk in and say, I want to drive two cars. Here's the VIN, here's the cars I want to drive. And the guy says, well, 
can we write you up today? It's like, no, but give me your card and I'll send you an offer. Okay, it's better for him too, right? Yeah. It's mutually advantageous. So that's really the easy part. You just separate it in, instead of going in and locking yourself in for four hours and hoping, you just do it in a more controlled manner, right? Uh, most people don't drive more than a couple cars. Um, but yeah, you can drive as many as you want, rent one. A lot of times people say, oh, I rode with John the other day in his car, I love this car, he let me drive it for an hour at lunch, that's the one we want. So, yeah, but you can break the, break the, you know, the process into pieces as well. Cool. Yes, sir? Yes, I thought you weren't buying it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to even recognize this question. Uh, no, it's, it's a type of question. How, I wasn't clear to me how you're getting pricing data. Uh, pricing data, so we aggregate Kelly Blue Book transactional data, Edmunds transactional data, and then on new cars, right, so on used cars, that gives us a baseline. Then we adjust for the regional differences. Like a four-wheel drive in this market is worth considerably more money. Now, all those guys actually have a geo-targeted number on price, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but we also have an algorithm where we apply. And then on new cars, we're looking at day supply. So how much supply is behind it? Because the transactional price for the last two weeks is certainly relevant, but if day supply is going up, price is going down. Right. Day supply going down, price is going up. Right? So that impacts the offer that sure. you would send along to the system? Basically, the number I showed you, that would take you two hours to get to in a dealership. If you just walked in, even if you were well prepared and you had things printed out and you were more or less prepared, to get to a final number, seeing all the taxes and everything on one piece of paper. Sometimes you don't see that until like, I ask you to sign it, too. Right? That would take you a couple hours. So that's your starting point. You shouldn't have a lot left to negotiate. And hopefully, if, when you look at the visibility, you'll, you'll be confident enough that you're getting a fair deal and fair treatment. Sure. When did this go live? Uh, not quite 10 days ago, 8 days ago. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you worked on it? Well, I had the idea about three years ago, so I kind of did all the background research myself for a year and a half. We, uh, we formed the company in January, hired uh, my two co-founders, CTO and a designer, so we've been working on it really for about seven months. Uh, just we're raising a seed round up to 750, we've got 300 in the bank, um, and a very small burn rate. You know, all the data is available, it's all the data that, I buy the same data now that dealers buy, so it's not like we have to create a lot of different pieces, with math is math, right? It's really just a matter of making it user friendly, and then starting a the marketing program to, to draw people in, etc. So back when I used to buy cars, I don't own a car either. Um, back when I used to buy cars, though, um, you know, I always knew what I wanted before I ever. I didn't, didn't do a test drive. I just knew the type of car I wanted. Sure. Been in them before or whatever. Um, so my question is, do you know how many people? What percentage of people do go to dealers and test drive versus those who have a car in mind? They're going to get that car. There's a that's lot. It. Yeah, there's a lot of people who go in that phase already. The average consumer who buys a car goes to 1.2 dealerships, which to me sounds like one, right? Um, so basically, they've either, they've either beforehand, they found a way to drive it, they've rented it, they've borrowed one from a friend, or they've gone in for a test drive and just said, look, I just need 20 minutes, you know, salesman could ride with me. I just got I got two things. I want to drive and I got to make sure this car seat fits in the back on the middle, <laughs> whatever those criteria are. So I'm trying to get to the mindset of the consumer, right? Sure. Because when I go in, I'm ready to buy. And so to me, breaking it into components, I can't see myself doing that. If I'm going to end up in that dealer's office, then I'm going to buy the car that day. But you, so As yeah, opposed to going back home, totally going yeah. on to Ben and buy No, you wouldn't, yeah, but so here's the thing. The average consumer spends 16 hours online researching a car, right? Which is how they wind up becoming leads to many dealers. They didn't intend to be a lead, but to get a price, to get a little better, if you go to AutoNation's website, it says you want the AutoNation price, guess what you got to give them? An email, right? So the point is, you could do all that work, and you could make one of two choices. You could push a button and send it to them, or you could just print it out and say, you know what? If I decide to stop in today, I'm just going to walk in and say, hey, I'll save you a lot of work. Don't even get out the crayon and all the red stuff. Here's my offer. Go give it to your manager, right? Um, the first mover in a game of tic-tac-toe has a 71% probability of winning your time basically where you are, because for the most part, people sit and wait for the offer to come from the dealer. You're far better served, whether you do it, walk it in and just lay it on, on the table, or whether you want to do it. And if you know what you want, you can just do it and send it and say, and the other thing is, you're going to walk in, you're not going to have bought the car yet. It's not a docu signed piece yet. Everything's printed. You're going to get the car and drive it around the block one time, right? And assuming it's what you think it is, for most people it would be, you say, great, sign the paperwork. If perchance it's not, you take your phone, scan it on the VIN, and say, I want this one. I'll be back in an hour, sorry for the inconvenience. They'll say, no worries, we're going to clean up for it, right? Because that's what they're trying to accomplish. Yes, sir? Uh, 
Thank you. Sure. So it seems like you're sort of caught between two difficult trends going forward. One, people like me, her, and the growing number of folks that don't feel like they're going to need cars in the future. Options like that help reduce the need for direct car ownership. And also a trend by the OEMs to develop closer relationships directly to the customers themselves mm -hmm. and a real incentive for the OEMs. They look literally at tons of cash incentives for the OEMs um, to try and build loyalty. Right. Uh, among just them and sort of keep people locked in an ecosystem of sorts. Uh, so how do you, and, and you're essentially on the other side of that. Um, so how, how do you, I mean, how, does, how do you kind of think about those two trends? So to have my two cars in here, right? So imagine the future. The average cars per household is 2.1, pretty much the same as kids, right? Here's one thing I can tell you. I don't care who in this room says I'm never going to have a car. You have a baby and a car seat, you're going to own a car. All right, because I don't care how convenient Uber is, trying to manhandle that and figure out, will this go in that car? No, you may not have two cars. The other thing is, if you have two cars, let's say this one, five years from now, is a self-driving car. We're going out of town for months. Let's plug that into a Lyft and let them use it, right? So let's plug that in and get some more use out of it. This is, this is really about your, your entree into that usage mock market. So you now have the ability to take all the friction out of, what am I driving? What's it worth? How can I use it? You'd be able to plug your self-driving car into a Lyft, an Uber, right? And let them use it for a period of time if you so choose, right? And if you don't want to, then you don't have to. But it gives you the options to do that. So this is really a platform that will serve both the usage market and the, and the ownership market. Thank you. Thank you.